As the EV segment grows and we approach a time when electric cars dominate the roads, this radical revolution continues to face new challenges. While China speeds ahead with unprecedented growth and infrastructural development, it faces a massive roadblock in exports. Europe navigates its own challenges, and the US grapples with fluctuation adoption rates. Developing markets like India are fighting their own battles, and Canada contends with the vast territories and infrastructural challenges. Stay with us to learn more about how different countries are adopting electric vehicles. China China is by far the most dominant force in the EV segment. The world's second largest population leads the pack in nearly every aspect of the EV industry, starting from sales figures. After the typically slow February and not particularly great March of 2024, the market stabilized over the last few months and currently grows at around 30% year over year. Battery electric vehicles already account for more than a third of the Chinese automotive market and the latest estimations suggest that EVs will hit a 10 million milestone this year. At a time when the American EV market has slowed down completely, China is still going strong, and one of the key reasons is its impeccable infrastructure. Like in no other place in the world, owning an EV is super convenient, thanks to an impressive network of slow and fast chargers. According to some estimations, 65% of all EV chargers in the world are located in China. Another highly contributing factor is the actual affordability of Chinese EVs. For more than a decade, Chinese authorities have been supporting startup and legacy EV makers, which allowed them to gain technology and reach massive production quickly, ensuring a sustainable business model that allowed EV prices to get close to or even surpass ICE counterparts in terms of affordability. The competition is fierce, discounts are massive, and customers benefit a lot. But automakers aren't the only side getting massive support from the government. Buyers may count on generous incentives as well, especially after the new 2023 to 2028 strategy was adopted. The total worth of this incentive package is 72 billion. And in 2024 and 2025, buyers of new EVs may count on up to $4,180 tax exemption. In the years 2026 and 2027, the support will slightly go down with the maximum exemption of $2,090. All in all, the Chinese EV revolution continues, slightly slower compared to the last few years, but still way better compared to the rest of the world. But China also faces a couple of challenges related to the country's economy, which shows slight signs of regression in the way that the government is trying out various methods to boost spending, which doesn't go as planned, especially after the real estate market almost reached collapse a few months ago. Another big problem for the Chinese EV industry is heavy reliance on the domestic market. For various reasons, Chinese EV makers are still unable to export in desired numbers, especially in Western markets. Even the leading companies like BYD sell 95% of their cars on the domestic market, which although huge, still has its limits. Europe After China, Europe is probably the strongest EV adopter in the world, but after a couple of years with pretty impressive growth, things slowed down in the last few months. Moreover, things went in the opposite direction, considering that the sales declined 10% in May 2024. Still, most think that this is just a temporary slowdown and that things will soon enough get back to what the European authorities see as normal. Considering that the plan of most countries is to ban combustion cars sometimes in the next decade. Of course, incentives are the key element of this electrification strategy, so each country offers generous support. In Germany, for example, buyers may count on incentives worth 4,000 euros for all electric and 3,000 for hybrids. Nevertheless, Europe's largest economy showed a massive regression in the EV sector, with a massive 30% fall in the first quarter of this year. Things are quite similar in France, where buyers of new EVs may also count on a 4,000 euro grant but also on €3,000 extra in case the yearly household income per member doesn't exceed €15,400. As for the rest of the European Union, incentive programs are various, and in some countries, we can even notice interesting trends of incentive cuts. The Netherlands is one of the best examples as a country that recently reduced the grants from €4,000 to €2,950. Norway leads the world in EV market share, with electric vehicles making up over 80% of the new car sales in 2022. The country's extensive incentives, including exemptions from taxes and tolls and a robust charging infrastructure, have driven this success. Norway aims to have all new cars sold be zero emission by 2025. Sweden and Denmark have also made significant strides. Sweden offers a bonus malice system 
rewarding low emission vehicles and penalizing higher emissions. Denmark provides tax exemptions and grants for EV purchases. Both countries have ambitious targets for phasing out fossil fuel cars by 2030 and 2035, respectively. Finland aims for 250,000 electric cars on the road by 2030, while Iceland is already seeing around 50% of new car sales being electric. As for the EV infrastructure, there are currently over 632,000 chargers across the European Union. That may seem like an impressive number, but let's not neglect that EV growth has been great in the last several years. Between 2017 and 2023, EV sales increased by over 18 times. Experts suggest that 8.8 .8 million chargers will be needed by the end of this decade, which means 1.2 million new chargers every year. That sounds nice, but the only problem is that the current growth rate of chargers is significantly lower, as only 153,000 charging points were added last year. Clearly, the infrastructure is one of the biggest challenges at the moment, but it's not the only one. There is also the matter of the European automotive industry, which doesn't seem like it has what's needed to keep pace with Chinese EV makers. European manufacturers can't produce EVs that are affordable as Chinese ones. While some experts even talk about the superior battery technology the Chinese models have and see it as a big advantage. For that reason, the European Union has no other option but to protect its own industry by imposing massive taxes on imported Chinese EVs, which have just been revised and now are at 38%. United States The U.S. market is currently one of the biggest mysteries when it comes to electrification because it looks like the government has given up on its fast electrification plan. After years of impressive growth, things went downhill starting from the second half of 2023. Massive discounts Tesla and other EV makers offer didn't help much, as sales went down anyway. The first quarter of this year ended with a minor year-over-year -year growth of just 2%, but what's way more symptomatic is the quarter-over-quarter -quarter changes, which went down 15% when comparing Q4 of the last year and the Q1 of 2024. This trend continued in the second quarter, and even though companies like GM and Kia proudly announced record-high sales, the fact is, the key players in the segment, including Tesla, which holds the majority of the market, went down. In April, the Austin-based EV maker recorded 17% lower sales results compared to the same month in 2023. Currently, EVs account for a little bit over 7%. Problems with EV adoption in America are numerous, starting from the lack of interest that the middle class shows in all electric vehicles. Average Americans still prefer combustion engines, along with hybrids, which have been growing pretty fast in the last year or so. All this happens at the time when the government offers a massive $7,500 federal tax credit, which obviously isn't enough to convince most of the buyers in the all-electric future. Some automakers give additional incentives to boost sales, while the ongoing price war imposed by Tesla made EVs more affordable than ever. Somehow, that's still not enough to make EVs accessible enough. At the same time, legacy car makers such as Ford and GM still haven't figured out how to make a profit on EVs. They've been losing billions in the last few years, which, together with the obvious lack of demand, forced them to cut production and delay many projects. Consequently, EPA revised its electrification plan in the way that the administration no longer expects two-thirds of the new cars to be all electric by 2032. The new proposal is significantly less demanding in terms of emissions, which in practice means a huge relief, especially in the pickup truck market, which will be allowed to remain focused on internal combustion engines in years to come. The United States is a huge country, extremely diverse, and that's perfectly reflected through the EV infrastructure. While areas like California have excellent charging networks, things are quite the opposite in rural areas of America. But even in the most developed parts of the country, such as the San Francisco Bay Area, EV owners have been having a lot of trouble with charging due to unreliable charging stations and other related issues. Canada just like other Western countries, Canada showed a big EV growth over the last few years. Even though things slowed down a bit this year, electric cars already came to the point where they account for more than 10% of the total market. That's a notably better result compared to the United States, but still, Canada also has its own specific challenges, even though it's been pretty generous with subsidies. Anyone who buys a new EV may count on $5,000 incentives, while certain provinces also came up with their local subsidies. For example, Quebec authorities support their residents with another $7,000, so it doesn't surprise that this province is one of the fastest adopters in Canada. Currently, EVs account for 13.2% of the new car market, but that's enough for only the second position, considering that BC is by far the fastest EV adopter with EVs accounting in this area for 18.1%. 
Canada has always been investing a lot in EV infrastructure, including the massive support to EV makers to build their own stations. But challenges still exist in the way that this is one of the largest countries in the world with not so dense population. In other words, remote areas continue to be the biggest challenges, even bigger compared to the US and some other markets, considering Canada's size. Therefore, the adoption rate is significantly lower in less populated provinces. For example, only 3.5% of new vehicles are all electric in Alberta, while figures are even lower in provinces like Newfoundland, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut, where new EVs account for 1.8%, 1.3%, and 0.6% of the new car market, respectively. India The world's largest population is one of the fastest growing car markets around, with a steady 10% annual increase in the last few years. Of course, we are talking about the overall car market. As far as the EV sector, the number of new EVs in 2023 almost doubled compared to 2022, and the same trend seems to continue in 2024. While most of the world shows signs of stagnation, India advances at a fast pace. One of the reasons is the strong presence of domestic automakers that cater to the needs of Indian customers perfectly. Besides common electric vehicles, the Indian EV industry also put a great focus on all-electric motorcycles and so-called three-wheelers. Altogether, EV sales are expected to exceed 1.6 million units in 2025 and reach 15 million by the end of this decade. Clearly, India is adopting electric vehicles pretty fast, and besides the adequate market offer, that's also because of the role the Indian government plays in this electric revolution. Authorities launched an incentive program way back in 2015 and provided incentives for 278,000 EVs just in its first stage. The second phase started in 2019, and it will last until the end of this year with, once again, massive support for the EVs, as well as additional support for electric buses and charging stations. Speaking of charging stations, this would be the biggest challenge the Indian electric revolution is facing. The whole world, except maybe for China, is facing the problem called lack of charging infrastructure. But in the case of India, it may be on an even higher level because the country needs between 5.6 and 5.8 million public chargers by the end of the decade if it wants to meet the target Indian government has set. And that would be 30% share by 2030. Currently, all charging stations in India have slow chargers. So we are talking about one extremely challenging task here. If you watched until now, you might be interested in the next video we've lined up for you. See you there.